there's a lot of conversation right now about what um, takeaways we can use from this crisis teaching and learning that we can use when we are no longer in a pandemic. And hopefully we can take a couple things from this, from this experience. One thing that's happened across the state is that more students have access to laptops and tablets. It was this final, this final like push for schools to provide students with access to these things. So there was this influx of purchasing of all these tools so st students had the resources they, need, they needed to be able to do teaching and learning online. So what we're gonna see is there's a lot of technology out there right now um, that hopefully is gonna be better utilized when we move back into non-pandemic uh, schooling. I think what we're also going to see is some teachers are gonna be much more confident in trying to play with things, tech things, that they're not quite so familiar with. So they had to dive in and jump in and go underwater for this past year. And that's really, really scary. Many people have figured out how to do that. It's not quite so scary anymore and they're treading water. And some of them are even swimming. And so I think we may see some increase in confidence in being able to say, hey, there's this new tool, there's this new robot, and being more able to just try things and fail at things um, than maybe before. So I think that could be another practice that might translate into um, schooling in the future. How is the structure of education going to change as, as a result of this? I'm so glad that you asked this question because this is a thing that I have been thinking about a lot both as a teacher and as a, and as a tech enthusiast and as a computer tech teacher, combining all of that into one. Um, SPPS recently announced that they are starting a, an online high school. Um, so it's going to be separate from Harding, Johnson, Central. Like it's gonna be a separate school from all of those other ones and it's going to just be online and I am planning on applying for a job there. Like now that I have my video lessons created and I've got my like weekly folder structure kind of figured out and you know that like that was the biggest time suck uh, uh, for me during this year and like now that I have gotten that initial work out of the way I feel like teaching online is is um, an environment that I personally can thrive in um, so I'm you know hoping to to get to take advantage of that. Even if I don't get that job and I'm still at Harding, like I am definitely planning on continuing to use the weekly folder structure and I'm planning on just having pre-recorded uh, lessons. Yeah, I hope we move forward and um, people take the positives from this experience um, and collectively mourn the negatives and um, the fear that technology used to really instill in a lot of people at least has um, alleviated a bit. One thing that we're hearing from students and from families is one benefit or like silver lining to this pandemic schooling is the flexible nature of the school day, the flexible nature of activities, due dates, um, all of these things. And um, it's one thing that I hope will transfer into our regular school days, especially for our secondary students who may be working, who may be having other crises, that there are different ways and different timelines that can happen for when um, activities are due for when students actually engage in learning. So they may not be logged in for a 7.30 math class. They may instead be doing math at eight o'clock p.m. So that's one thing that I think has been a happy thing. But I would say that that right now, that choice and how people learn is something that has um, really come to light out of all this because um, students have been given, students and families have been given a lot of uh, choice in where and how they learn all of this. So online learning is not something that we ha were doing um, at any levels prior to this. And it's something that we, you know, we're currently talking about on, on the Daily to Plan and look at how can we continue to provide some of that choice to families. Everyone's talking about not going back to normal mm -hmm. and everyone's talking, trying to talk about like what did we learn from this situation? What do we want to carry forward? Um, you know, 
in education, everything is built so closely together. It's this dom you know, this line of dominoes. And every time you want to change something, whether it's the schedule, whether it's um, the way in which instruction looks like, it topples another domino. And so people always kind of, you know, it change happens very slowly, and sometimes it doesn't happen at all because it'll push and pull on too many factors in this very tight model. Um, and what COVID has done has really almost cleared the board. We had to go back to the drawing board on a lot of stuff and it put people back on their heels and willing to try new things, willing to, hey, maybe we try a block schedule. Hey, uh, maybe we focus on this instructional model. And so now we're you know, having the conversation, what do we wanna keep? Maybe, you know, what have we learned from this? What have we learned about equity that we wanna make sure we do differently in the future? And so I hope people have those conversations and I hope that um, when we beat this pandemic that we don't go back to normal.